Welcome to a lesson that will justify the formula used for the general solution to represent damped force motion and practical resonance. In real life, undamped motion is unrealistic. This occurs when C, the friction or damping constant, is equal to zero. There is, of course, some damping. Going back to our equation, mx double prime plus cx prime plus kx equals big F sub zero times cosine of omega one t, where m is the mass, c is the friction or damping constant, k is a spring constant, and F sub zero times cosine of omega one t is some outside force acting on the mass. If we take this equation and divide both sides by m, and let p equal c divided by two m, and omega sub zero equal the square root of k divided by m, we can write equation 2.8 as x double prime plus two px prime plus the square of omega sub zero times x equals big F sub zero divided by m times cosine of omega one t. The roots of the characteristic equation of the associated homogeneous equation are equal to negative p plus or minus the square root of the quantity p squared minus the square of omega sub zero. Recall the form of the general solution of the associated homogeneous equation, which also gives us the complementary solution, depends on the sign of the radicand, which in this case would be p squared minus the square of omega sub zero, or if we're using the form of the original differential equation, the sign of c squared minus four km. So again, depending on the types of roots of the characteristic equation, we select the correct form of the complementary solution. Where if we have complex solutions, we have the third form, where omega sub two is equal to the square root of the quantity omega sub zero squared minus p squared. The next step is to determine a particular solution, x sub p. There can be no conflicts when trying to solve for the undetermined coefficients by trying x sub p equals a cosine of omega one t plus b times sine of omega one t. From here, there's quite a few steps missing. We substitute x sub p, x sub p prime, and x sub p double prime into the differential equation and simplify, which results in the equation shown here. And now we equate the coefficients. The coefficient of sine of omega one t is equal to zero. The coefficient of cosine of omega one t must equal f sub zero divided by m. Solving for a and b, we get the results shown below. For the alternative form of the general solution, we also need c, where c is equal to the square root of the quantity a squared plus b squared. Now that we have formulas for a and b, we have a formula for a particular solution shown here at the bottom of the screen. And now because we have a formula for x sub c and x sub p, we have a formula for the general solution. We have the complementary solution given by x sub c, and then we have a particular solution given by x sub p, and therefore the general solution is a sum of x sub c and x sub p. When we have damped force motion, we have to call x sub c, x sub tr, which is the transient solution, and we call x sub p, x sub sp, which is the steady periodic solution. We'll talk more about this in the next lesson. But before we go, I do want to mention, for the alternative form of the general solution, where we have the amplitude c and the phase shift gamma, we can express x sub p, the particular solution, in the form shown here below, if omega sub zero doesn't equal omega sub one, and if omega sub zero equals omega sub one, we can let both of them equal omega, and therefore a is equal to zero, b equals c, which is equal to big F sub zero divided by the product of two m omega p, and gamma is equal to pi divided by two. I hope you found this helpful.